everyone, I'm going to try to keep the video for this lesson relatively short uh, because the facts that you're going to need to know about sound uh, are pretty basic. There's only a few. And the majority of this lesson is examples and applications to sound waves. And we'll cover those in class so we can discuss them as we go through. First off, all sounds come from vibrations. Every single sound that's ever been created had some sort of vibration as its source. Whether it is a guitar with a vibrating string, a drum with a vibrating drum head, a horn with a vibrating mouthpiece or lips, a saxophone with a vibrating reed, singer with vibrating vocal cords, or a speaker with a vibrating cone, there always has to be a source of vibration to create sound. Sound waves are longitudinal waves that travel through the air. So the big idea behind sound is that we have some source that vibrates. The vibration causes pulses in the air around it. And those pulses cause pulses next to it, which cause pulses next to it. And so those pulses travel from the source to the receiver. Important to note, just like with other waves, these particles aren't traveling from the source to the ear. It's just the energy that's being transferred from one particle to the next. Once those areas of pressure hit the ear, the eardrum vibrates and sends a signal to your brain, which we perceive as sound. The relationship between the speed of sound and the frequency of sound is still V equals F lambda, exactly the same as any other type of wave. The pitch of sound refers to high or low notes. So a high pitch would be high notes, low pitch would be low notes, and the physical quantity of pitch is the frequency. The human ear is capable of detecting frequencies from around 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The loudness of the sound refers to the amplitude, or the energy, of the wave. The speed of sound in a given medium stays constant, and the speed of sound in air is generally around 343 to 345 meters per second. And there's a relationship between the speed of sound in air and the temperature of that air. You're not going to be responsible for any of these equations. These haven't come up on the AP Physics 1 exam and aren't likely to. But you probably will be responsible for understanding that in higher temperature air, there's a higher speed of sound. Even though we're not going to run into any problems where we have to utilize this equation for the speed of sound in air given the air's temperature, it's still going to be worth doing some practice with some wave problems involving sound. <clears throat> when we're working through sound problems, we really just use the same strategies we would use for any other type of wave. In this first example, a siren goes off in the Stargate School parking lot. The air temperature in the physics room is a perfect 24 degrees Celsius. Ms. LeBlanc knows that the frequency of the sound is 745 hertz. What is the sound's wavelength in the room? The equation that I'm going to need to use to find the wavelength when given the frequency is the velocity of that sound wave is equal to frequency times wavelength. I'm then going to use this equation up here to find the velocity when the temperature of the air is 24 degrees. Plug 745 hertz in for the frequency. And I get a wavelength of 0 0.464 meters. Next, we've got a cold evening with negative 5 degrees Celsius. We shout towards canyon wall and time how long it takes for the echo to return. How far are you from the canyon if it took 0 0.70 seconds for your echo to return? These echo problems are a little bit tricky because we have to think about the path that the sound has to travel. So let's say that this canyon wall is D meters away. The sound has to travel there and back. So that speed of sound is going to be equal to distance over time, where the distance is double this distance to the canyon. First thing I'm going to do 
is solved for the speed of sound in this temperature air. Plug in 0.7 seconds for the time and solve for D. And I get 114.8 meters.